Can you imagine a cheap stock that has a built-in profit of 10x? That's right, a thousand percent upside potential built into the stock. I know it sounds crazy. Give me the next 30 seconds. I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about in a stock that you should be checking out right now, which could become my next 10 bagger. Now, in case you don't know, my name is Jack Marks. I wrote this book. It's a number one bestseller on Amazon. It's called 10 Bagger Blueprint. What is it about? In case you don't know, a 10-bagger, it's a Wall Street term. It means a stock that goes up 10x. Now, I've given investors 10, no, excuse me, 11 stocks in the last 24 months that have increased between 1,000 and 5,000 percent. That's right, stocks that have gone up between 10x and 50x. And I believe that this one, Nova Mentis, NMLSF, could be my next 10-bagger. So check this presentation out, and then you decide for yourself. So Novamentus Life Sciences, this is the stock. It's a psychedelics biotech stock. It's trading at about five cents right now. The investment thesis I have for this, again, we have multiple ways of looking at stocks. I talked about it in the book, but my investment thesis for this stock is what I call the valuation gap arbitrage. Valuation gap arbitrage. What does that mean? Okay, the stock is trading at a nickel. I think the upside is 50 cents based on this valuation gap closing. One of the things I want to look at is what are the comps? What are the the peer group? What is the peer group trading at? Okay, in the case of Nova Mentis, other psychedelic stocks that are you know relatively speaking at the same stage as Nova Mentis. Again, these companies are in the early stages of clinical trials that might be in phase 2, phase 2A, phase 3 clinical trials for different psychedelic based drugs for neurological disorders. Some of them are trading at as you can see on the screen, 400 million, 400 million, 432 million, excuse me, 300 million, 130. The, lo- the cheapest one right there at the bottom of the screen is $94 million. And Nova Mentis is under $10 million. Actually, $7 million is the valuation right now. That's right, under $10 million. What is the difference between Nova Mentis and the stocks that are, are trading at $100 million and up? Very simply, in my opinion, the reason why it's trading so cheap right now is that the company is simply unknown. Now, Novamentis is starting to enter clinical trials. They're starting patient recruitment for clinical trial for uh, a psychedelic therapeutic for treating fragile X. It's a subset of autism. We'll go into it right now. But the reality of it is this. Novamentis, I believe, should be trading at potentially uh, 50 cents plus. Okay. Again, based on the comps, how does this work? Very simply. Uh, Let me give you a real estate metaphor that a lot of people can understand. Uh, There's something called, I think in real estate, they call it a wedge deal. Okay. You've seen this probably discussed on YouTube. Uh, Think of it this way. You have a neighborhood of houses. They're all the same houses. They're all, you know, same size, same lot. Tract homes, right? They're all selling for, let's call it $500,000, right? For these houses, right? That's what they're all going for. What if you could buy a house in that neighborhood? for $50,000. Would you do it? I know that sounds crazy. A 90% discount? Well, in the real estate world, that never happens. It never happens because real estate is a relatively efficient market. People understand a real estate. So you can't really ever get a real bargain. You may have an opportunity to buy that house for you know, $400,000, you know, 20%, 25% discount if you have a motivated seller, right? That's, that's the whole real estate game. That's what it's all about, trying to find that motivated seller. So you get that house, which is, you know, priced at a discount to the comps, right? Very difficult to do in real estate. In the stock market, this happens all the time. And by the way, that's a big part of, of you know, the reason for, you know, our success in having stocks, you know, finding so many of these stocks that have, you know, gone up 10x to 50x or more is they were undervalued when we introduced them, when we introduced them to investors, they were deeply undervalued to their peer group, just like Nova Mentis is right now. Now, again, you're seeing it on your screen right in front of your eyes. This stock is trading at a nickel, which represents about a $7 million, $8 million valuation. The peers are 94, 100 million, 400 million, even, right? Why is Nova Metas not trading at 100 million right now? Simply, the company is, is not well known. That's the reality. And I believe that valuation gap will close in the next coming months as this company gets better known. As their drug, you know, uh, heads into the clinical trial again, the patient recruiting is starting right now. They just announced that the pr- patient recruitment is starting now. So there's multiple catalysts 
to close that valuation gap. Now, let's go let's go through this real quick. Now, again, I have had many many winners in the last uh, you know a couple of years. We've even look. I've even introduced stocks that have gone up hundred x. Uh, you ever hear of a company called Axon? Originally known as Taser. Stock we introduced, I think it was a dollar or two dollars back in the day. Went to two hundred dollars. Rick's Cabaret that became a hundred bagger. Um, Heska, a stock that was just I think acquired for one hundred and twenty dollars. We introduced it at I think two fifty back in the day. Now again, you don't want to wait years for these stocks to to explode. These these stocks I'm talking about right here. They all increased uh, 10x to 50x uh, within 12 months or less. Uh, take a look at this. Peak fintech became a 20 bagger, increased 2,000 uh, percent. Cytodyne, that was my last biotech, increased 20x, 2,000 percent, from 50 cents to 10 dollars. Again, they're all very, very similar to Nova Mentos right now in many, many ways. There's a lot of commonalities. That's why I'm showing you these four charts, these four stocks. Again, out of many winners we've had, by the way, I'm not even talking about the stocks we've had that have gone up, you know, you know, 500%, 300%, all that stuff. I'm not even talking, I'm only talking about the 10 baggers. Uh, uh, Peak FinTech, CBDT, it's a stock that went up 50X. That's right. This was a life-changing stock for many people. Stock went from a nickel to $2.50. And you know what? When we introduced it at, at a nickel, nobody believed it. But... The company was in what I call the 10-bagger window. All these stocks, when we introduced them, they were in what we call the 10-bagger window. Now, again, it's a concept I talk about in my book, 10-bagger blueprint. Get this on Amazon. What is it all about? The 10-bagger window, it's a moment in time, and you can see this for yourself, when a, where a stock has potential to increase 10x or more. That's where all the value happens. You look at any stock. You look at any chart. Pull up any chart. Any stock, I don't care if it's Google, Microsoft, whatever it is, Apple. Look at any of those charts, especially smaller companies. Most of the big gains when they have that massive run it usually happens in a very short window of time, usually six to nine months. It's a phenomenon. I think I'm the first person to ever describe it. I'm, I call it the 10 bagger window. But the reality is this most of the time, stocks are pretty much going sideways until they enter a moment where the kind of the stars align and you have, again, this 10-bagger window. The 10-bagger window opens up. And what is it? It's basically, it's a moment in time where the company, the stock price is undervalued, right? Where it's trading cheap compared to the comps, right? Again, I, in my book, I say price is everything. You got to get into these stocks cheap. You cannot be chasing them when they're already up 500%. You're going to lose money if you do that. You got to get into them cheap where they're de-risked, where your, your risk is minimal. You have asymmetric bets. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for an asymmetric bet. I talk about it in the book where, again, it's kind of like a long, like those, you know, horse racing. You have these long shot odds, 100 to 1. The difference is it's trading as a 100 to 1 racehorse, but the real odds are probably closer to 5 to 1 or 10 to 1 maybe. So you're really, you're coming in with a big edge. Let me go through this right now. So this stock is, is going into 10 bagger window. Now, um, what is what is what is the investment thesis for Nova Mentos? So let's go into some details. Number one is they're going after a massive multi-billion dollar market opportunity, uh, which is the uh, again the uh, psilocybin therapeutic for treating autism, and then eventually this could be potentially it has uh, applications for other neurological disorders, which is like an eighty billion dollar market. But my thesis is this: uh, you have, you got a massive opportunity, which a lot of investors don't understand. You have what I call the valuation gap arbitrage here, where the stock is trading at about an 8 million valuation. The peers are 90 million, 100 million, 400 million plus. So even at the midpoint, right? Even at the midpoint, even if I'm dead wrong, even if it's, you know, you got to take everything I say with a grain of salt, okay? Let's say it, it doesn't close the valuation gap to, you know, 100 million. Let's say it only goes up to 45 million valuation, right? That would still make this stock a what a five bagger plus. Uh, let's look at the numbers here. So if the valuation gap only closes to twenty five million, let's say I'm really wrong. Let's say it's only the valuation goes to twenty five million, which would be kind of a disaster. Uh, but that really would be at the low end of the kind of the curve, right? That would still make this a fifteen cent stock. So you could have a triple. At the low end, you would have a triple if really things are bad. Uh, and I think that would be a disaster. 
Midway point is if the company gets to 50 million valuation, they release some good data, the market, you know, investors all of a sudden realize that this thing has potential, it goes somewhere in the 50 million range, right? Which is very cheap for biotech stocks. That would make this a 30 cent stock. Now, if things really work, again, if investors, you know, position, if investors start viewing Nova Metis as, you know, a, a, a real psychedelic stock, as a true peer to those stocks that you see in that peer group, you would have a hundred million valuation. That would still place it at the bottom of that range. Again, you're looking at that at that spreadsheet. It would still be at the bottom of the range of those stocks, right? It would be over here. It would be at the bottom of that range, uh, and that would still make it a um, a fifty cent stock. That gives you a ten x upside. Now, again, with biotech stocks, you have blue sky potential. We've seen these things go crazy. That stock I showed you before, Cytodyne, it went up two thousand percent, twenty x. Uh, in less than a year, uh, again, the market, biotech investors, they start extrapolating. They go crazy if they see positive data, if they see things really working. I talk about this in the book, 10 Bagger Blueprint. Uh, get the book so you understand exactly how these things work so you can make money. A lot of investors in penny stocks, unfortunately, lose money because they don't know how the game is played. You got to get the book, 10 Bagger Blueprint. Now, let's go to the fundamentals. Uh, so again, what is Nova Mentors doing? Uh, they're essentially developing a psilocybin therapeutic for treating fragile X. It's a subset of autism. Uh, it's a rare drug. It's a rare disease. Now, Nova actually has uh, a rare dr uh, orphan drug designation from the FDA for uh, fragile X. Now, the autism spectrum disorder, you know, therapeutic market is, according to uh, some data, a little bit under four billion dollars right now. It's a little bit under four billion. Now. The company is going to use Fragile X. I mean, the strategy is to get in, use Fragile X sort of as, as the beachhead, right? You, if you get approval, if you get commercialization for this, you know, rare, uh, rare disease, then potentially, and we see this happen with, with pharma all the time. This is how the drug companies work. They get in with, you know, they get approval, and then they try to expand. They call, you know, they call it label expansion or, or you know, off-label prescriptions where doctors prescribe it, you know, off-label, you know, off labeled for you know other indications that are kind of related. Now we've already seen from preclinical data, uh, preclinical research in the animal model that this that this psilocybin therapeutic has had very positive effects for memory. Now could this have applications for you know uh, dementia, for Alzheimer's, uh, for Parkinson's, a lot of neurological disorders? We're going to find out at some point, right? But the goal is initially to get this approved for Fragile X and then expand into, you know, uh, aut the broad uh, autism spectrum. And then really, once we get more data, then we can go into other, you know, uh, th those are other possibilities. But that is a huge, huge market. How big is it? Just under $80 billion, according to DataBridge. That's the um, market for neurological uh, disorder drugs. Uh, and again, if Nova shows... You know, you know, really strong results potentially may have applications for Parkinson's, dementia, uh, other disorders, massive, massive blue sky potential. And again, this thing is trading at less than a 10 million valuation today. That is what I see as the opportunity here. Now, what kind of traction have they gotten? Have they have they delivered results? Have they? I mean, they've got incredible traction. They've had incredible milestones in the last 12 months. And again, based on a very, very limited, limited budget that they've been working with. So the company has had incredible progress. And again, they're going into the phase two eight clinical trials. It's, again, it's a milestone, especially for, it's the, it's, I, think, I believe it's the first one for autism, uh, autism spectrum. Fragile X, that is definitely a first. Uh, you know, they have orphan drug designation from the FDA on that. Now, again, I'm going back to that, uh, that uh, matrix I showed you. The one thing I talk about in my book is the idea is price is everything. The way to make money with penny stocks. Most investors, they get into these stocks once they've had big run-ups. I like to get into stocks when they're at the bottom, when they're at the ground floor, where you're getting them at a deep, deep discount. Okay, I talk about this in the book. Price, there's a whole chapter called Price is Everything. Now, again, I want to get into a stock at a deep discount to peers. That's our edge. That's the edge. Especially in this market, we're in a bear market for stocks right now. That's right, we're in a bear market. It's probably going to go lower for a while, right? So, what you the, the only stocks you should be buying 
is stocks that are where you have that edge. You're getting in where they're, uh, you have, again, like in real estate, that wedge deal, right? So if you're getting into a stock that that's at a 75, 90% discount to its peer group, you got downside protection because it's already been so deep, deeply discounted. How much worse can it get, right? I mean, think about it. Um, now, uh, the, the main thing is this, right? What is the catalyst? The thing you need to be asking yourself, what is the catalyst that's going to ignite that, that, that uh, move to close the valuation gap? And that is this. It's the start of the phase two clinical trials. They're going to start delivering data, and that's going to attract investor eyeballs. Positive data from clinical trials is a major catalyst for biotech stocks. Guys, we've seen this all the time where these biotech stocks explode literally overnight. They can go double or triple based on positive data. You see this anytime. Just do, you know, do see for yourself, right? Uh, any day of the week, you look at the stocks that are you know up the most percentage gains, biggest percentage gainers. Seventy-five percent of the time, they're biotech stocks that have had positive data that came out of a trial. On the flip side, if they had bad data, they're down the most, right? So that's the that's the thing with biotech. It's a double-edged sword. Now, because they're going to the clinical trial. I, what I say is that the 10 bagger window is open. Okay. In my book, again, I talk about this 10 bagger window, that window, the 10 bagger window, it's open. Now that the clinical trial is, start, is, is, is ready to start, they're starting the patient recruitment now, right? That is when the value for the stock can be created. Again, if they release positive data, you have a massive repricing in the stock. I mean, and you could have an, imp, you know, you could have the stock repriced at 25, you know, 50 million valuation, hundred million valuation depending on the data, depending on what happens, right? And how the market reacts to it. Uh, but that's the opportunity. Again, this, you know, these stocks are going sideways for years and all of a sudden you have that inflection point, you have the catalyst. This is the inflection point right now. It's these clinical trials. Now, um, let's talk about something very important, the team quality, the team quality. Uh, so the chairman of the company, Derek Avani, he, this guy, uh, massive winner, He's been in the capital markets, you know, for, I don't know, 20, uh, his whole life, basically, right? The guy's in, I think he's, is he 40? I don't know. He's a young guy, right? Uh, his last stock was a hundred bagger, right? It was a hundred bagger stock in the cannabis sector. And I know cannabis was a hot sector, whatever, but it was a hundred bagger, right? I believe history tends to repeat. Am I saying that Nova is going to go up to a hundred X? I'm not saying that, but this guy's had a hundred baggers. Now, what about the chief medical officer? That's the guy... Who created the whole medical, the, the whole clinical trial program, everything else? Dr. Marvin Hausen. He's brought multiple drugs through the FDA process to market, to commercialization. Uh, and he's had, actually, he was a CEO of a company that became, I believe, a 50 bagger. It was a, you know, up 50x, 5,000%, maybe more. And this was on the New York Stock Exchange. It started off as a really a, a micro cap. I don't think it was a penny stock. I think it was a couple dollars, but it was a micro cap, right? And uh, it went up 50x. Uh, Will Raskan, the CEO, uh, th again, this guy's responsible for getting this whole program done on a very, very tight budget. He's had multiple, you know, multi-baggers. I think the previous company was a 20-bagger. So these, all these guys involved in this company, the whole team, they've all had 10-bagger plus type gains in their background. That's what I like to see. I like to see past track record of success and motivation. Now, uh, one other thing I look at is in my book, I talk about one thing you want to look at is the theme sector heat. It's very important. You want to be part of a hot sector. It's, it helps a lot, right? Uh, because a rising tide lifts all boats. What's happening in the psychedelics. The honest truth is this: psychedelics right now is relatively cold. It was very hot, you know, 18 months ago. It got ahead of itself, but the good news is we've seen this happen. In other sectors, right? They get ahead. The stocks get way ahead of themselves. They crash. And then all of a sudden, the companies actually keep, you know, the companies don't stop. The stocks crash, but the companies keep going. They keep progressing. And now as a result, uh, what happens is uh, now the company is, in many cases, ahead of the stock, right? So what does that mean? We're expecting a number of late stage clinical trials for these psychedelic drugs to uh, start releasing data in the next 12 months, right? So those are going to be catalysts. And by the way, it's not me saying it. It's some top, top biotech analysts believe that next year, 2024, which is 12 months away, really or less, eight months away, if you want to be accurate, uh, is going to be the breakout year. Now, my theory is this. 
Uh, I talk about this in the book. You want to go where the puck is heading. It's like Wayne Gretzky. Why was he the best hockey player? He wasn't chasing after the puck. Most of you investors, you lose money because you're chasing after stocks that have already made moves. They're already hot. And you're chasing after a theme that's already hot. No, that's a mistake. Get the book. You, you got to understand. You got to get into position before the theme takes off. You got to be positioned in the rocket before it lifts off. That's how, why Wayne Gretzky was successful. He went to where the puck was heading, not chasing after the puck. And the puck is going to be going to the psychedelic space in the next 8 to 12 months, uh, according to people much smarter than me in the biotech space. Um, so again, if these biotech stocks start releasing positive data, we can have the whole sector heat up dramatically. And that's going to give a further lift to everything that's going on. Now, my favorite thing, my favorite thing is this. I talk about this in the book. The charts, the first thing personally I look at, I could talk about the fundamentals all day long. When I first look at a stock, the first thing I look at is the chart. The charts don't lie. Yet. That's what I say. And by the way, in my book, 10 Bagger Blueprint, number one bestseller on Amazon, from what I'm hearing, the, the you know, I have a chapter here on technical analysis, which really explains in detail, uh, you know, everything you need to know about, you know, chart reading, technical analysis, like, like an idiot can understand it. People love that chapter. Maybe that's the best part of the book. I don't know. The first thing I look at is the charts because the charts don't lie. They tell you the truth in advance. What is the chart telling us about Nova Memphis? Well, one of the things is, this is the weekly chart, by the way. So I like I like stocks, which I like to get into stocks, which are at a big base, have a massive base, massive double bottom, massive wide base, which Nova has. Again, I, I, I talk about this in the book. That's the, the, the first thing I look at it. I want to see a big wide base. So the stock has been de-risked. And then I want to see the stock breaking out of that base. I want to see a breakout, okay? Because that means the, moment, the the trend has changed. And we're seeing that right now. Right now, we're seeing Nova Mentis broke out of the 50-week moving average. And it's approaching the 200-week moving average. The 50-week, again, 50 weeks is a whole time. So that is a key indication. You got a big base. You got a breakout of the 50-week moving average. That's a technical buy signal. That is a technical buy signal. Now, let's zoom in on the daily chart. Uh, we got a breakout above the 50 and the 200 day moving average. That's right, 50 and 200 day moving average. The MACD is turning up. Uh, and the stock, I don't know if you want to call it a pennant formation or whatever, but here's the thing the main resistance is going to be the 10 cent range. I believe that's kind of the main resistance. If the stock breaks out of 10 cents, you know, it's game on, right? Because the next Level after that is going to be the 20 cent range. After that, it's going to be like 50 cent or more, right? So, again, you can, you know, get in the stock right now. I'm not, I'm not, again, I'm not giving advice. I'm not saying you should buy or sell. But if you get into the stock here, you get positioned here, you have relatively low risk. Again, where is it going to go? It's going to go to zero. It's not going to go to zero. I don't think it's going to go to zero. It's possible. You never know. But stock is at a nickel. You know, where is it going to go? The down, the lowest price we've seen in this year is about three cents, two and a half. Actually, I think three cents was the low, right? So you got a couple pennies in the downside. Potentially, this could be a 50 cent stock, maybe even a dollar stock. Again, that would that would make it a 20 bagger. And we've had 20 baggers uh, in biotech, uh, like Cytodyne, right? And again, to me, this stock, Nova Mentos has so much in common with all those other winners I showed you. Stocks that I went up 50x, 20x, 10x. The charts look the same. The setups were the same. So many common denominators. It's like it's like I've seen this movie before. I've seen this movie before. I'm sharing with you right now. Now, um, again, we got a breakout of the 50 and 200-day moving average. So that's a major technical buy signal, major technical buy signal. MACD is turning up. And uh, the next level of resistance is 10 cents. Now, by the way, um, some investors are waiting for this thing to break out of 10 cents if it breaks out of 10 cents that is when the FOMO kicks in because that's the real momentum buyers come in because all sorts of technical signals go off and then they say okay wow this thing has got momentum it broke out of major resistance but of course that would be a double from here so you know there's different ways of playing it I don't blame you if you want to wait till 10 cents till, till 11 cents technically or you can get in here it makes no difference to me right but um personally I would prefer if People watching this, if you're watching this, 
I, I prefer you, you do not buy it here because I want you to put this on your watch list. Because in my opinion, what, what makes stocks really go up is investors, you get a lot of people watching a stock. And when they see the stock starting to perform, they see the stock moving. That's when they jump in and that sends the stock higher. So as far as I'm concerned, and by the way, I own a ton of stock. I'd rather see you buy the stock once it breaks out of 11 cents because then you know, the market is going to go bananas. Uh, it's going to go to you know 20 cents or more. Uh, and, and that's that's what's going to be the, the the thing driving it, right? So bottom line is you got a nickel stock. Upside, I believe, in the stock is 50 cents or more based on the catalyst, which we discussed. Now, again, everything I'm talking about is paid content. I'm actually going to give you this disclaimer at the at the bottom of the screen here. Everything here is uh, 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 should be considered. Actually, it should be. It is paid content. Now, I own uh, shares of the company. I own uh, uh, five million shares. I bought in a private placement a year ago, right? So I, I, I'm an investor in the company. I bought in a private placement, which was at uh, a nickel, right? So it was a, a shares and a warrant. Uh, I'm also a consultant to the company. Uh, every the whole disclaimer is right over here. Uh, check it out, read this uh, at, at your leisure, put it on pause or whatever. Uh, again, I want to give you full disclosure. Take everything I say with a grain of salt. Again, the whole idea is, and I talk about this in my book, 10 Bagger Blueprint, is this. You need stocks that also are doing, you know, they're investing in what I call, you know, stock promotion, okay? You got to get eyeballs on the stock. That's why the stock was undervalued. They didn't have any promotion going on. For long periods of time, it was on and off, or whatever. So, the promotion, the getting eyeballs onto the stock, uh, you know, like again, videos like this is an example, right? The more eyeballs go on the stock, the more potential demand there is for the stock, and that's how the stocks go up. That's how all our stocks have gone up. That's why you know we've had more again, multi bagger stocks. I'm not even talking about the ten baggers. We've had how many stocks that went up 300, 500 percent? We had Cloud MD, Red Light Holland. Uh, uh, I, I go down the list of all the doubles and triples. Uh, that doesn't even count. Or, organic or garage, uh, that was a double. Uh, you know that. You know so many, so many of these winners. But again, ten baggers. We've had we've had uh, a lot of ten baggers. A lot of ten baggers uh, in the last um, twelve months. Let me just roll roll this over here real quick so that uh, you can actually see this. That's right. By the way, if you're watching this on YouTube, click the like, subscribe channel below. So you join the channel. Uh, but yeah, these are some of the winners we've had that you could have gotten in on the ground floor and they looked exactly like Nova Mentis does now. Uh, Fans Unite, up 1,300%. Imagine AR, 1,700%. Cytodon, 2,000%. Visby, 1,000%. Um, this thing is going to keep rolling here. Peak Fintech, 2,000%. Um, I got to wait for this thing to roll, right? Uh, ESC, 1,300%. CBDT, 5,000%. Next Tech, 1,500%. Uh, did I miss anything? No, I think that, that covers everything. Okay, guys, thank you for watching. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments below. And here's to your 100x. Make sure you get a copy of my book, 10 Bagger Blueprint, so that you are prepared. You got to be an informed investor. The book is 19.95 on Amazon. I don't make money on the books. Okay, this is not you know, this is not how I make my money. Uh, the reason I wrote this book, everything I learned over 25 years. I, I wish I knew this stuff 25 years ago. Um, everything I know about stocks that have, that could become ten baggers, the whole system is revealed in this book. And the reason I wrote this is that so that you know my audience is you know they're informed investors, so they know when to get in and also when to get out. That's right. I talk about in the book when is the time to get out of these stocks because at some point you do need to take profits and in the book i give you the exact timing of when to do that okay let me know what you think here's to your 100x